Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bassman Studio. I'm Charles Bassman. Thanks for tuning in. And today, this lesson in observance of Halloween, we will be painting a head of Medusa. For those of you familiar with Medusa, she can turn people into stone just by looking at them, or if you look into her eyes, she can turn you into stone. So it's a very old Greek uh, myth. And I've actually done a lithograph of Perseus and Andromeda where Perseus uses the head of Medusa to turn the Kraken into stone. So it's one of my favorite myths. So today's lesson was very, very fun to paint. And I hope you enjoy it. And so sit back and relax. And let's start this lesson from Bassman Studio. So here we are starting on our paper. And as usual, for a portrait, we're starting with an oval shape. So I will draw an oval shape here. And that's going to be the size of our head. So remember, it's egg-shaped when you start out. And now we can just place the eyes. So very lightly. Don't draw too dark, just in case you have to erase. And the nose and the mouth. So very lightly, you just place the features. Not a lot of detail. And even the eyeballs. And the eyebrows. Do you see how light I'm drawing? Very, very light. And now we could draw the hair, Medusa's hair, which are snakes. So we could just draw that. And of course we could add more later. But for now, it's just a very simple, very light drawing. Again, you just never know when you need to erase. So you want to keep everything very light, very loose. And avoid detail, of course, as much as possible. Think of shapes. Detail could come later, so no need to rush. The important thing now is placement and composition and simplicity. So I could go on and on drawing snakes for inner hair, but uh, the, you get the general idea. You just want to put enough to suggest hair. And like I said, I could always put more later. So. So there we have like our drawing almost set up. And. So there we have our drawing, and soon we could start painting. Just adding a few more. Of course, you want to look at your drawing and make sure that everything is there. The head's where it's supposed to be. Composition is what you want it to be. And if you need to start over again, don't worry about it. Just start over again. This is the stage where you can start over again a lot easier. It's much harder to start again when you're painting. So here's our palette, and I'm using acrylic. So I set up all my paint. Everything is clean and ready. My brushes are ready. And water is right there for ready use. So we can start painting now. It's always good to keep your paints and brushes in good order. So here I'm starting with the background. The good thing about starting with the background is, is that it pulls the object that you're painting forward. So it's a good practice to start from back to front. So you start out by painting the background and you can see it's pulling it forward. And just want to go all around. 
a big brush. And now I can start with the flesh tone. Again, keeping it really simple, just big areas, remember? As I always say, just keep it simple and big. Big brush. Don't worry about shadows yet or anything. You just want to lay in the large areas of color. And as you get more practice, you get faster. So remember, don't rush. And putting a little bit of red for flesh tone. And you just want to go all around. Sometimes you'll find that you'll paint over your drawing, which is fine, it happens. And this is like almost like a liberating like part of painting. It's very loose and free. You can just go all around, kind of let go a little bit. It's almost like exercising in a way. It kind of like warms you up for like the detail. And you can see I'm just going right around the face. But I'm avoiding the eyes and mouth, you see? Because those are considered a detail. Those come later. And the neck. Now I can start painting the snakes. I ch chose like a really vibrant yellowish green for the beginning. They're going to be different colors, like different kinds of green, but I thought this green would really stand out. That's my personal choice. But the main object is that you keep everything very simple. Just big flat areas. And you see I added a little blue, so now it's like a bluish green. Just for a little variety. And you just want to go around and think of them as, again, shapes, as I always say. In this, in this case, like tubes. You know, no detail, no eyes, anything. And you want to keep it this simple for as long as you can. As much as you want to paint the eyes, nose, and mouth, just keep it, keep the details until the very end. So now we're mixing a bit of the shadow area. I'm using a little bit of black, blue, and red. And a little green. Very little, you don't need that much. And now I'm just painting in the shadows. Remember, very simple, but now you can see that things start to turn, have volume. So we call volume in art. And since I chose the light source for being overhead, Shadows are cast underneath her nose, underneath her top lip, and underneath her brow. And of course, underneath her chin. So with a slightly smaller brush, I'm adding slightly smaller details. But not the smallest detail, not yet. And even the pupils of the eye are at least... I'm choosing green just to match her, her snakes, basically. And even the shadows on the snakes. Of course, they have volume. So you want, we want them to stand out too. And since they're tubes, basically, the shadows are pretty easy 
to paint. And you can see they start turning. And to me, this is like one of the most fun things to paint is the shadows, because that's when things start to really come alive. And I'm doing this fairly quickly, but again, it comes with practice. So don't do, don't do it too quickly if you're not sure yet. Take your time. And you just want to go all around. You see, I'm not staying in one area. I'm moving around the painting. You just want to go around and you want to, again, you want to avoid any minute details yet. So we're almost finished blocking in the head. And now I could even go and put the shadow right underneath her, in her eye socket, basically. Since we wanted to recede and give the eye a bit more shape. Little by little, it starts to look like a person. And even her cheekbones. So even though this is a mythical portrait, this goes for portraits as well. And you could blend, you could even blend a little bit like I'm doing. Acrylic dries very quickly, so it's a little tougher to blend when it's dry. And now I could add the upper lid using a very thin brush, as you can see. So now we can start working on the smaller details. And this takes a little bit more control. So as you can see, I'm working slightly slower than before. So we want to give her eyes volume and shape. And we want to make, make them look like they're actually in, you know, in her eye socket. So it's good to go and do all these like small details. And even the lips, we can even open her mouth. So little by little, you just want to go around. You want to put everything that needs to be put in, even like going back and working on the snakes, which I must admit are just very fun to paint. When you're painting something out of your head and it's a theme like a mythological theme, it does give you more freedom to experiment. I find. So with the thin brush, you just want to go, remember, don't focus just on one area of the painting. Look at everything, go around. Everything has to be in harmony with everything else, everything else in the painting. So you want to go around the painting and you want to make sure everything is working with everything else. You can't have one part working and one part not working. It's, it's all, it's all one. And now you could, we could even work on the background and kind of soften it a little bit. So really take a look at your painting and see what needs to be fixed.
I have to admit, this is the first time I ever did a painting of Medusa, so it's just very fun. And even her, her eyeballs and the highlight on her eye, which gives the eye like wetness. You need a really, really, really thin brush or something like that. but it starts to have volume. And of course you can go as far as you want. As I always say, if you want to put super minute detail, go right ahead. So adding in like small highlights again. And these are all the little things now. Now I'm just going around and fixing whatever I need to be needs to be fixed. So this is by choice. So you can go, as I said before, you can go as far as you want. So if you feel that what you did represents like what you want to express at that point, then by all means stop. If it works for you and it, it's fine. And if you want to go as far as you want to go, like you want to put super small detail, that's your choice. The important thing is that it works and it has harmony. And you always want to start off simple. So it's very satisfying when it's like toward the very end of a painting. And you're just, you're just like going around fixing things. Because now you could add all the little small details. And even blend a little bit. So here we have it, our head of Medusa. Hope you enjoyed. And just in time for Halloween. Well, I hope you enjoyed that lesson from Bassman Studio. I know I did. And remember, any comments or questions you may have, please leave it in the comments section, and I'll be glad to answer them. And remember, don't forget to subscribe to uh, stay tuned for more videos coming up very soon, more fun Bassman Studio videos. Any suggestions, anything that you might want to see um, as an art lesson, please let me know as well. And... Um, Thanks for everyone who has subscribed. You're all awesome. And um, stay tuned for the next art lesson, which should be coming up in a few weeks. So remember, uh, have an amazing and creative day. And don't forget to brush up your skills. Paint and draw every day. Thanks again, everyone. Take care.